Chapter 25 Life in Rouge The books that encompassed the table in front of him seemed endless. They were large, they were expensive, and his hair had been destroyed hours ago by the constant tugging and pulling his fingers did to it. The back of his pen was toast as well, chewed almost to bits. Graduate school was really fucking hard and he spent more time studying than he did breathing. Or well, it felt like that. It probably didn't help that he kept glancing at the clock every other minute, and when he wasn't glancing at the clock he was definitely glancing at the door. That made studying the detailed functions of HDL cholesterol in the body really difficult. Okay, focus, he could do this. There were just three more pages in this chapter. And that ten-page paper is due in three days. Not to mention the research he needed to analyze and email the lab about. His professor was waiting for a proposal from him, too. His head thumped loudly into the desk in front of him. I'm never going to get done. He groaned as his book slid from the desk and landed on the floor. He pointedly ignored it. It could sit there all night for all he cared about at this point. Ugh, but he still cared a lot. He wanted his degree in advanced biotechnics and nutrition. He really wanted it, but it was 2.30 in the morning and he had class at 9.30. What he needed was sleep and to give up on this stupid paper for the time being. It wasn't due for another three days anyway, and he had most of it done. Bubba pushed himself slowly away from the desk and rubbed a hand over his face. The desk was an installment he had insisted upon when he moved in with Marshall. If he was going to go to graduate school here, then he was damn well going to have a proper desk to do work on. Not that he ever got a lot of work done as it was. God, what had he signed himself up for with this graduate school thing? He slumped his way away from the desk and drug his feet like cinder blocks all the way to the bed. Their bed. His and Marshall's bed. He still vibrantly remembered when they picked it out together and argued about what kind of bed they even wanted. The decision had come about the first time when Bubba had brought up the fact that they could definitely not keep sleeping on Marshall's full mattress if there were two of them in one bed. He wanted at least a queen-sized bed. Marshall, of course, had immediately called him a prissy princess and much bickering had occurred. He'd won, of course, and they'd driven to the mall to pick out parts for a new bed frame and a fluffy mattress. Or at least that had been their goal. It had definitely taken more than one day to get it all sorted out. As great as they were together, and as much as he was head over heels for the man they sure did love to bicker. Bubba chuckled to himself as he flopped down on the bed and immediately grabbed the pillow that belonged primarily to Marshall. It smelled like him, and that was the best part. Not to mention the soft, silky feel of the cotton sheets on his face. He must have been more exhausted from his late-night work than he realized because his eyes were already closed and consciousness and schoolwork were thoughts as far gone as a leaf in a rapidly moving river. Unconsciousness took him faster than a tidal wave, and it was a sweet and blissful sleep. His groggy mind was awoken gently by movement of his legs. Not his own movement of his legs, though, someone else moving them, for him. Bubba blinked his eyes sleepily and tried to see through the veiled drowsiness that clouded his everything. Someone was taking off his socks one at a time, and he blinked again to clear up the image. It was familiar enough and easy to recognize even in his half asleep state. You're home. He smiled subconsciously. Emotions bear in his vulnerable and sleepy state. Yes, and you stayed up too late studying again. He opened his mouth to rebuttal and snapped it closed with a silent huff and a pout. Marshall had already crawled onto the bed and was tugging at the hem of Bubba's shirt to slide it gently over his head and toss it onto the floor. Right next to the laundry basket but of course not eyeing it. You missed the laundry basket. He grumbled the words and Marshall just openly laughed at his complaint and pulled the covers up over both of their bodies. Tough, I guess you'll have to fix it in the morning. Bubba groaned loudly and reached with his eyes closed to sweat at Marshall repeatedly in annoyance. I'm not your housewife. 
Learn to pick up after yourself. His hand was grabbed and held onto, and he relinquished his own control of the appendage. He was too tired to fight, and all he wanted to do was scoot closer to the man next to him and just fall back asleep. Fingers were stroking softly through his hair, and he hummed appreciatively. Do you have classes tomorrow? The voice was soft and near his ear, and it reminded him of the singing he loved to hear when Marshall would play at his own bar. Yeah. Just two morning classes, though. I should be done by noon at the latest. Tomorrow was his easy day, thank love. He prayed that he wouldn't be assigned any more homework even though he knew that was impossible. Oh well. He was the one that wanted to double major and minor in his field. How about you and I grab some lunch tomorrow then? I'll meet you after your class, my treat. Bubba cracked an eye open and looked at the man laying directly across from him with suspicion. What's the occasion? Marshall raised an eyebrow and smirked. No occasion. Why should there have to be one for me to take you on a date? Bubba didn't buy it. Did you break something in the house? The bartender balked and sat up. What? No, of course not. Geez, I can't have lunch with my boyfriend without being interrogated now. Bubba sighed and rubbed his eyes tiredly. Okay, maybe he'd been a little rash. No, you don't. I'm sorry. It's just sudden and it feels like we haven't gone on a date in ages. He shrugged tiredly. I just thought maybe I forgot something like an important date. You forget an important date? Bubba, all of our friends' birthdays are color-coded in the calendar based on their ages. Bubba blinked at him. So? So you would be the last person to forget an important date. Nothing special about it, just a lunch out together because we've both been busy and it has been a while since we've been on a date. Bubba considered it for a long moment and nodded. He leaned over and pressed his lips gently to Marshall's cheek before laying back down in bed and snuggling under the covers. Don't forget to pick me up from class. Marshall chuckled and laid back down as well. Bubba felt arms pull him closer and smiled with his eyes closed. Already sleep was taking him in its clutches again. Wouldn't dream of it, Gumball. He fell into a dreamless sleep with those words on his brain. The morning was bright and awful but he had always found it easy to be awake once he had been shaken from sleep. It was 7.58 a.m. when he woke up, two minutes before his alarm and he sluggishly crawled out of bed and headed straight for the kitchen. He immediately went to the personal coffee machine and pressed the button to turn it on. He was damn lucky that this thing only required that a few buttons be pushed before he had a steaming cup of coffee ready to be consumed. Of course it needed two sugar cubes and caramel creamer first. As much as he loved Marshall's new bar, a part of him wished that it was still the cafe that it had originally been. He would have gladly gone there every morning before class to get a coffee or a sweet chai tea latte. Then again with a glance at the bedroom door he figured that maybe he had the best part of the cafe with him here already. Bubba smiled unabashedly into his coffee before taking a nice long drink. His regular routine commenced after his cup was done. He grabbed the morning paper from the doorstep of their apartment and set it on the kitchen table before heading off to the bathroom. His shower was hot and wonderful and after styling his hair perfectly and making sure that his sweater vest and white button matched his tie and slacks. He enjoyed a bowl of Lucky Charm cereal and looked over the news in the paper. It was mostly repetitive, talking about the politics happening around in this featured place or what accidents had happened in the world. Sometimes the paper was downright depressing with stories of worldly events or special news coverage of tragic events happening in the United States. This morning featured a special surprise as he flipped the page. In the center of the page there was a picture of a very familiar cafe and underneath that a photo of the bar it had been turned into a few years prior. The headline read, Bar Beats Cafe, Best Thing to Hit Toronto. It was a critique that just couldn't rave enough about the blood bank and how great of a bar it was and what a great idea it was to turn it from the failing cafe into such a creative place for young adults. 
pride for the man sleeping soundly in their bed swelled in his chest as he read the review. He even went as far as to keep the paper flipped open to that page and left a congratulatory note for Marshall. Even if they weren't celebrating something today they could appreciate this great review. Bubba mentally reminded himself to get something nice for Marshall as he left the apartment, like a new silk tie he could wear at the bar. The clouds that threatened to storm overhead did nothing to dampen his mood as he went to class that day. There was something entirely new to the fulfillment he felt when he had read that article. It wasn't about him, it had nothing to do with his personal successes, but he wanted to hang it on the wall and keep looking at it. The high praise was what Marshall deserved, and it felt good to know that he wasn't the only one who thought that he deserved some kind of reward for all of his hard work. His classes were mundane, and he took diligent notes, as always. Regardless, he found himself watching the clock in his second class, waiting for it to end. It was stupid because it wasn't like it was his first date, it wasn't like he was in high school anymore. He chided himself, but it did nothing to stop his tapping feet or the haste with which he packed his bag when the professor finally dismissed them five minutes later than normal. By some miracle the clouds had cleared up and the sun was visible as he stepped outside of the sciences building and headed towards the parking lot. His phone vibrated in his pocket, and he pulled it out to look at the text message he had received. Don't you look cute. Did you dress up just for me? Winky face. It was from Marshall, and he felt his cheeks flare to life as he realized that maybe he was a tad overdressed for classes today. Maybe the tie really hadn't been necessary, but more importantly where was Marshall that he could see him already. He scanned the school grounds looking for the mail only to spot him in the closest parking lot, leaning against his black motorcycle like he had been waiting for hours. Typical. Bubba smiled despite himself and walked quickly in that direction. He passed by two girls who were talking excitedly about the hot guy with the motorcycle and Bubba smirked proudly. He strode right up to Marshall who was grinning devilishly like the world belonged to him and kissed him full on the mouth. Whether it was to wipe that stupid grin off his face or show those girls who exactly the hot motorcycle guy belonged to he would never tell. It was worth it though to watch Marshall blink into the daylight like he'd been blinded. Well then. Hello? Hi. Bubba smiled breathlessly and then gestured to the bike. You know we live within walking distance from the campus, right? Yes, but where we're going to get lunch is not within walking distance. Bubba narrowed his eyes and poked Marshall in the stomach teasingly. You just wanted to look cool waiting for me in front of the school dash. I would never. He gasped playfully and pulled an offended hand up to his chest. You so would. Bubba laughed and bumped their shoulders together. He grabbed the pink helmet that was his and quickly put it on. It flattened his quiff of pink hair a little bit, but safety was important. If he lectured Marshall for an hour on the importance of helmet wearing when he bought the motorcycle, then he was going to lead by example and also wear a helmet. Motorcycles were dangerous enough without a lack of helmets. Marshall was pouting a little bit as he slid onto the bike first and threw his helmet on as well. Bubba waited for him to kick up the stand and get situated before he swung a leg over and situated himself right behind his boyfriend. Good to go? Marshall looked over his shoulder and Bubba gave him an excited thumbs up. Okay, maybe riding the motorcycle was a little bit of fun sometimes. Still dangerous, though. They took off at a slow pace and were on the main roads and off of his school campus in no time. Bubba thought at that moment that maybe this was what life was supposed to be. It was kind of plain, and he didn't sleep or relax as much as he really should, but he was genuinely happy. Nothing was perfect between them, and he knew that nothing ever would be. Marshall would probably always throw his clothes right next to the laundry basket instead of in it, and he would probably always overwork himself and make Marshall worry about him. Regardless of all of that, this was exactly where he wanted to be. You just ran a red light. He watched as the light passed overhead and bumped his helmet against Marshall's. 
Marshall elbowed him with a laugh and ignored his nagging. It was orange! He shouted over his shoulder, and Bubba grumbled. The laughter died down slowly, and he heard a sigh. Sorry, I won't do it again. Good. Yeah, the almost perfect life. 